हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू साइंस एंड टेक सीरीज विद डॉक्टर वेक राना होप योर प्रिपरेशन इज ऑन राइट ट्रैक एंड यू आर फॉलोइंग साइंस एंड टेक सीरीज एज वेल सो टुडे द टॉपिक फॉर डिस्कशन इज गोइंग टू बी फ्रॉम लाइफ साइंसेज एंड वी हैव अ माइनर स्पेस अपडेट एज वेल सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल बी डी कोडिंग एन इम्पॉर्टेंट डिस्कवरी फ्रॉम पेलियंटोलॉजी विथ मे रेवल्यूशनाइज अवर थिंकिंग अबाउट यू कुड से द लाइफ साइंसेज तो द फर्स्ट थीम वी आर टेकिंग अप टूडे विल बी Pirucetus colossus. It's a new uh, species which has been unearthed after you could say years of excavation, and surprisingly, it has changed the way we look at the theme of gigantism. So, without wasting any time, we'll be first uh, classifying this organism because whenever some species is in news, first basic thing which you should ideally do is to classify at, at, at what likely is the species in news falls under in Animalia kingdom. so first and foremost uh, as you can see on your screen it's uh, an, an animal species so the kingdom is going to be animal kingdom the phylum is the mammals the most advanced group which is currently existing on earth now coming to it's you could say class or order then it belongs to cetaceans now cetaceans we all know is one of the group which is currently existing on earth and is touted to be uh, one of the largest living organisms which are currently inhabiting earth we all know the largest living organism currently on earth is blue whale and it falls under cetaceans cetacean also has some other interesting members like dolphin porpoises mainly we have covered in our class the sea cow dugong so it belongs to the same order and you could say it belongs to the ancient family of whale in simple terms if you don't want to go into the technicalities of cetacean group and this bird is representing the genus and species of the name coming to the nomenclature part now uh, as we know that uh, the largest living organism currently on earth is blue whale we, uh, if we consider terrestrial system african elephant is touted as the largest living animal on terrestrial ecosystem but uh, over the years it was understood that blue whale might have been the largest ever organism which has ever existed on earth but the new fossil records from you could say ica desert in peru has revealed some significant discovery and now that historical fact is likely to be challenged by this current species because if we look at the blue whales they have roughly 3.5 to 4.5 tons on average and uh, the he heaviest ever blue whale ever discovered was you could say 200 uh, tons but the current fossil of this particular species which has been unearthed is likely to span roughly 20 meters on average that fossil does not represent the largest ever member of this group so likely the scientists are presuming that most likely this species might have been from 17 to 25 you could say meters in length and its weight is estimated to be whooping 85 to 340 tons so basically you can say it's almost twice as heavy as gel so what contributed to this gigantism is not clearly understood but definitely the scientists are predicting that most likely they the bone density was heavier than the current blue whale disciple and this organism most likely was in the shallow waters and mainly feeding on some you could say the benthic organism like crustaceans or mollusks so uh, if we look at this vertebrae which have been discovered and they have been uh, preserved in museum a single vertebrae is roughly up to 100 to 200 kg so we can say if we compare to the blue whales it is roughly equal to 35 elephant so you could say that this uh, species is was quite magnanimous and significantly it alters the fact of largest living animal which existed on earth now coming to the nomenclature part since the fossil has been discovered in peru in south america so the name starts with peru cetus word representing the whale because cetacean whales belong to cetacean group and colossal in any english term represents massive or large size so in simple terms we can say that it's a peruvian whale or a giant whale of peruvian origin so more needs to be understood so make sure if the question is coming which is the largest living animal there is no need to panic it will still stay the blue whale or cetaceans only if they ask on land animal then the answer is going to be african elephant if they ask that which is the likely the most 
ever heaviest animal to have existed on earth and if this technical name pyrocytus colossus is mentioned you can bet on it because it has been now clearly covered by all leading media newspapers as well as the website so there is no harm in updating this current affair part in the life sciences domain now uh, so this is uh, make sure you just go through the basics of aquatic mammals amphibious mammals and some misnomers which are generally uh, associated with the fish and the mammals we all know the shark represent the fish and a cartilaginous and bony fish difference are also to be covered in as a background of this theme because generally they will mention which of the following are aquatic an animals or which of the following represents the uh, you could say amphibious habit so make sure you are absolutely clear about these basic terms while revising this basic theme of blue whale and apart from that the, the basic facts of blue whale that it lacks pinna it has blubber in its body and uh, it uh, its four limbs are modified into flippers which helps in swimming are also to be revised so this is what we had in our first segment now the second major segment as we all know the newspaper are now covering uh, the chandrayaan 3 mission which is going to be the most ever significant achievement in, in isro space program this year uh, which is likely to be enter into you could say the rover or lander are likely to make a soft landing on august 23 so we are making track of it but meanwhile isro has made once again nation proud by successfully launching once another pslv mission so we will also be highlighting few facts about pslv c56 mission so the protocol for space current affairs remains the same the launch site was once again shri harikota high altitude range which is popularly known as satish dhawan space center so there is no surprises the launch vehicle as the name suggests was polar satellite launch vehicle so make sure you are clear about the differentiation between uh, geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle and small satellite launch vehicle which private sector are, are in near future are going to use quite frequently because pslv is a four stage launch vehicle using solid and liquid fuels alternatively and there is no cryogenic stage that's the basic difference which you should uh, be clear about now this time the number of satellites launched are seven so seven is a significant number once again india has a track record of launching over 400 foreign satellites and from 34 different countries so this adds to that uh, milestone once again so this time there are there is no indian satellite all seven were foreign you know, satellites and they are from singapore you can see uh, developed nations are more and more relying on india's pslv because of cost economics because isro uh, offers one of the most economical launches and the safest as well as with technical precision so uh, apart from right from usa canada lithuania most of the you could say emerging economies as well as developed economies prefer india's workhorse pslv for economical satellite launches so singapore has just used that now in this case the main payload is ds uh, sar now in this you don't need to mug up this technical name but you should be clear that generally pslv is uh, designed to carry earth observation satellites and these earth observation satellite these days are advanced you could say remote sensing satellites using synthetic aperture radar so this sar word if you go into technical it's representing synthetic aperture radar and it's the department of space of singapore which is associated with the project so they have used that acronym so most likely they will just ask that what is the nature of satellite so you have to pick eos or earth observation satellite or remote sensing and it's a all weather satellite whether it's day night or it's uh, might be raining it's going to be affected now apart from that the other six satellites were once again from singapore so just they go through the names for for once because you, you are not likely to get any specific question on this thing yes a blind question might be asked they will just give you two three names what does this represent they might say these are the ransomware which are in news just like we have seen this uh, week akira ransomware dominating headlines so make sure you just go through the list it includes velox arcade you could say there is a galacia nuleon scoop 2 is also there and finally there is orb strike so there are quite technical names but these are more relevant for singapore people rather than india if there had been any indian satellite then this 
theme would have garnered much more attention from examination point of view. For the time being, you could just jot down so that you know that it is another feather in ISRO's, you could say, commercial program and the slowly uh, ISRO is emerging as a commercial destination as well. And we have already privatized sector, so there is no stopping from uh, the such milestones coming in ISRO's. So I hope uh, the basic nitty gritties of these two basic themes, parachutus clauses and PSLV C56 mission are now clear in your mind. Make sure you update them in your, uh, you could say, class notes for better revision and linkage with the static uh, themes. If you have any specific doubt which has not been addressed in this lecture, feel free to connect. We will uh, take up your genuine queries. So have a nice day. Thank you very much.